Hi everyone, this is Piteio from the 9th Age Forum and in this video I'm gonna show you a game that I played last night with the uh, quick starter rules using my Sylvan Elves against Demon Legions as played by Urza06. Hi Urza. So let's move straight to the beginning of the game. First thing to do is to roll a d4 to generate one of the random maps so we got a three so we loaded the temple area um, map you see an impassable terrain to the north a uh, hindering terrain to the east a hill to the south this is a hill um, an impassable terrain to the southwest and a hindering terrain to the northwest then we have to decide who's going to be player alpha so the player who deploys first and has the first turn so we do a roll off and I roll higher, so the Sylvan Elves are going to be um, faction Alpha. So I load the Sylvan Elves army and I deploy the Sylvan Elves army. And then it's uh, here you can see that how the uh, Druid is embedded in the uh, Archer's unit. Then uh, Demon Legions uh, deploy as well, and we are ready for turn one player alpha, so Sylvan Elves, first player in the turn. Charge phase, no charge because we're still too far away. In the movement phase, I move the Wide Huntsmen behind uh, the hill to give them uh, line of sight on most of the battlefield, but still to give them some cover from shooting. And then I move the Dryads up there. In uh, the Magic phase, I roll a... Uh, what number is that? I think it's a 4. So I get um, 6 Power Dice and 5 Dispel Dice. And these are my two spells. The Healing Waters, which give Aegis to a friendly unit within 12. And the Truth of Time, which gives Maximized Roll to a friendly unit within 24 for Charge pursuit overrun and uh, yeah so I think that I cast uh, healing waters on the archers and then I try and which is not dispelled and then I try and cast uh, truth of time uh, on the wild huntsman as and as you can see from my face I uh, miscast uh, phase one with three dice two two and two <laughs> fun uh, but Ursa is, isn't that happy because he realizes that he has to um, dispel the spell anyways, so there's no miscast for me. He manages to uh, dispel the, the, the spell and so save my druid in the process. We then move to the shooting phase, and in this phase the archers are going to shoot at the um, hellhounds, and I manage to kill one. In the melee phase, there's no combat, so we move straight to turn one by player beta. So let's move to the uh, Demon Legions. In the charge phase, nothing happens. And in the movement phase, we see the Hellhounds getting closer to the impassable terrain, Myrmidons um, moving forward, and Imps moving forward as well to try and get into range of the um, Wild Huntsmen. Then, uh, um, when we are doing the movement, this is just to show you how you can control, like you can verify whether um, units have line of sight when there is um, a hill in the middle. So we are now discussing uh, whether this uh, imp, which is the second from the bottom in the uh, front rank, can see the, um, the wild huntsman. And the way you do it is that you take the most uh, practical point on the imp's base, which is the one to the to the north of the fourth imp, so the one with the mouse cursor, and then you put a line that goes from the point to the other obstruction points represented by the hill, and if you can see any of the target units, then you have a line of sight and you can shoot at the unit with a penalty, but you can shoot. So we now move to the um, magic phase, and uh, Ursa gets 7 against 5 magic dice. He uh, wants to cast Wrath of God, which is a nasty spell that deals damage in a, in a given area. Um, 
and um, I essentially uh, let it let it go without trying to dispel it. So that means that one dryad dies, and one archer dies as well because of the wrath of God. That's okay because now we have the second spell which is the uh, Dance Macabre, and I am intended not to let him uh, do any dance. So I am ready to uh, save my dice and dispel that, but that's not necessary because Rosa rolls very low, and so I kind of waste my dispel dice. Anyway, we then move to the shooting phase, and here the imps are going to try and shoot at the uh, Wild Huntsman, and they manage to kill one. Um, once again, there's no melee phase, so we move straight to turn two, player alpha, so Sylvan Elves, charge phase, and I mean, I know I can play more cleverly, but uh, no, <laughs> I like to play fun in this type of game. So charge phase, the uh, Wild Huntsman charge into the Imps, uh, sorry, into the Myrmidons. Uh, with the um, with the harbinger, so let's let's see what happens in that fight. This is kind of a reckless move, but yeah. Then in the um, movement phase, I go forward with my um, archers, essentially because I want to keep the druid in uh, in line um, in range for casting um, healing waters. And then I move forward with the um, Dryads as well, in a way that they can contribute to the fight uh, should the Hellhounds decide to charge the Archers. In the Magic phase, I get four dice against three, so I can only try and uh, cast the Healing Waters on my uh, Huntsman, and I manage to, um, to cast that. We move to the shooting phase, and then the archers are going to shoot at the uh, hellhounds, hoping to do a lot of damage. We uh, have a close-up of calculating whether you are in short range or not. This is a 14.9, so this is short range. You can also calculate it using the line of sight, so you see that this is um, this second guy instead is past the 15 uh, inches mark. So I do my shooting and nothing happens, <laughs> no, not one dies. So we move to the melee phase for the first combat of the game, turn two. And this is a combat between my um, um, Wild Huntsman against the Myrmidons and the Harbinger. So you can, if you don't know about the stats for these guys, you can uh, pause the video and uh, look at the uh, look at the profiles and the special rules. Huntsman. Now Myrmidons. And now the Harbinger. So I go first, and I manage to kill four of the uh, Myrmidons. I put all of my attacks on the Myrms, and then uh, the Harbinger strikes back and kills one Huntsman and another Huntsman. Ouch. And then the Myrmidons attack too, but they don't kill um, any of my uh, of my Huntsmen, and that means that I win the combat by two, and so two more uh, Myrmidons die due to the uh, demonic uh, rule, which in the quick start uh, looks a lot like the undead uh, rule. Alright, turn two, play a beta, charge phase, and uh, the Hellhounds are going into the archers, because, I mean, I didn't manage to kill any with shooting, so hell yeah, why not? First movement, then wheeling, then impacting. In the movement phase, the imps can move forward, like so, and then we move to the uh, magic phase. And in the magic phase, we get a six against three, so it's a very, very good um, uh, arrangement. But the fact is that if the Harbinger wants to cast the Wrath of God, Wrath of God has to be in line of sight, and units block line of sight in the quick starter. So this is the only place along this line where the Harbinger could cast a spell, and that would mean hitting the... Um, Hellhound as well. So, you know, we place the uh, marker here, but in the end, we rather decide not to cast it. So, 
Osa tries a dance macabre that I don't manage to dispel, and so the imps can move forward and get a neat line of sight onto the dryad. We then go to the shooting phase, and the imps take out one of the dryads, and then we move to the melee phase. So Osa decides that we're gonna start with the hellhounds fight, so these are the stats for the hellhounds, and I have my druid in the unit of archers so this is the uh, this is the um, um, f uh, warriors involved in this combat so i attack with my archers and i manage to kill one uh, hellhound but then the hellhound attacks back and kills four archers which is kind of a lot and yeah kind of unsurprisingly uh, this goes really bad for the archers who flee and the Hellhounds are pursuing, but they don't make it. So this is this is good because it's drawing this unit away from the scoring zone. The melee phase of the second turn isn't over yet. We still have the fight between the the Myrmidons and the uh, Harbinger versus the um, Wild Huntsmen. And so again, Wild Huntsmen attack first. They manage to kill two Myrmidons. And I am very, very lucky. <laughs> it was really fun rolling these dice. Uh, I managed to get no uh, wounds uh, from either the Harbinger or the remaining uh, the, um, uh, the remaining Myrmidon. And so I win the combat by two. I kill another Imp, and I uh, another Myrmidon, and I put a wound on the uh, Harbinger. And then I can slide so that I can have both my models into combat after the combat period or more and it's more appropriately called a combat mm, reform i would say I'm, I'm sliding in combat right so this is the end of turn two so we've played half of the game already charge phase for the sylvan elves in turn three and of course the dryads are gonna go and smash into the imps contact close the door and we're ready for another fight in um, the movement phase, I can use the druid's discipline to, which is the same as the archers in truth, to try and rally uh, my uh, archers, and I succeed in doing so. We move to the magic phase, and I mean, in the magic phase, I'm a bit annoyed because I'm far away from the um, from the wild huntsmen, so I cannot protect them with the um, healing waters. So I have to cast the healing waters on myself. Um, but I think it gets dispelled, if I remember correctly. And then I uh, can cast the truth of time, which I don't think it's a good idea. But yeah, I, I cast the truth of time on the uh, Sylvan Archers. Probably I shouldn't have done that. Anyway. Now uh, we move to the melee phase of turn three for Sylvan Elves. And uh, we start with the combat with the um, Harbinger, because I'm kind of hopeful that uh, he or she or it would die and not transfer the discipline to the um, imps, but whatever. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> the, the Harbinger uh, actually uh, manages to kill both uh, the, the Huntsmen without getting a single wound. So yeah, quite ugly, that, that didn't go well. But at least now I have a combat with a good combat unit um, for Sylvan Elves against a non-combat unit for the Demon Legion. So the Dryads, um, which have this profile, attack the Imps, which have this profile. And so, unsurprisingly, the Dryads kill four Imps. Imps don't kill Dryads in return. And so, in the end, I deal five more wounds, which means that there is one imp hero which is still there and i don't know that's silly but we found that to be really uh, fun like you know this this small this small demon blocking uh, a, a whole unit of dryads so that the uh, so that the harbinger can charge in in the next turn and uh yeah of course that's what happens uh charging first with the hellhounds into the archers and you know after some thinking i decided the best thing for me to do is to flee and you know hopefully draw the hellhounds further away from the center of the field in a way that they cannot go back and occupy the objective because at this point if i manage to kill that one imp and to have one dryad uh, alive by the end of the game 
I won because I have most units in the center of the board. The Hellhounds will not be able to charge the archers and then go back by next turn. So I flee. And I flee off the board and the Hellhounds roll crazy low and so they still manage to be in an area that's kind of useful for them. So yeah, uh, so much for that plan. But yeah, anyway. So, uh, second part of the charge phase, the um, Harbinger gets in, like so, we're all snug and compacted. We move to the magic phase and, you know, there's some wisdom in deciding not to cast the, um, uh, not to cast the, how is it called? The uh, Wrath of God uh, on the only place where it can be cast, which is in combat. And um, the um, uh, Hellhounds are too far away to be the targets of um, Dance Macabre. So we move directly to the melee phase because there's no shooting because the Imps are in combat already. And this means that the um, Harbinger goes um, together with the Dryads in um, agility step. Um, so the Harbinger kills two Dryads. I attack back with the Dryads and I put four attacks on the Imp because that hero has to die and has done what he was supposed to do, so that's that's enough in my book. Uh, but then I manage I don't manage to put any wounds on the uh, on the Harbinger, so that's how this uh, melee um, phase ends here. We then move to the final phase of the uh, for the, the final turn of the game for the Sylvan Elves. And I mean there's no charge to be declared, there's no movement, there's no magic, there's no shooting. We go straight to the melee phase. And here, <laughs> again, I managed to put one wound on the on the Harbinger, but the Harbinger gives a wound back. And so, once more, it's a draw, and uh, nothing much happens. So we move to the um, turn four by uh, Demon Legion, so this is the last player turn of the game. And in the movement phase, this is interesting, let me take one minute to talk about this. In the movement phase, um, the uh, Hellhounds want to uh, try and quickly go back to the center of the board to win the objective. But if you try a wheeling movement, um, you can't really uh, move well enough to be back into the range of the dance macabre right because this is the type of wheeling movement that you have to try but if you notice that this is the wheeling movement done by universal battle using the using the uh, uh, movement tray this um, lime greeny thing which is now including two dead uh, two dead hellhounds and so that means that the uh, movement for the wheeling is calculated to be larger than it actually is. So one um, one walk around for this is to just create another unit with the footprint matching the models that you have, and then to rotate that. And that means that wheeling is going to cost far less. And so, like so, you can uh, move and rotate and get closer and be in range ouch for um ouch for me i mean it's great for ursa uh, to get in range for the um dance macabre and so that means that um we go into the magic phase and of course four dice for demons and three for elves that's the worst combination ever i don't manage to dispel the uh to dispel it um we even have a uh, miscast <laughs> and so i'm ready to try and save the uh the the the, the harbinger from uh, from its miscast fate it only has one wound so it might die uh, if we roll a four up on the uh, on the miscast uh, but i really don't want that unit to get to the center so i'm i'm happy to save the harbinger and risk the harbinger and killing my dryads as long as that doesn't happen but no, I don't manage to uh, I don't manage to dispel uh, the spell and uh, so yeah, the spell goes through and the miscast effect is that the Harbinger forgets the spell, I mean at the very last turn. So <laughs> this went really bad for me this last this last um, magic phase. Anyway, in the melee phase, then the Harbinger manages to kill one dryad. 
but go Dryad, six attacks, and uh, with some supports for the spectators in the room, I do manage to finally take the Harbinger out of the battlefield. And there's yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of laughing about that because I mean it it is epic. We just we just you know head on the battlefield at the end of the game, two Dryads for me, and uh, and three Hellhounds for the. Um, for the Demon Legions, and both were within the um, six inches marker from the center of the battlefield. And so the result of the game is a uh, draw. One for me and one for Demon Legions, scoring units within six. So this is the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed it. We sure did, as you can surely see from our faces uh, in, the, uh, in the webcam. Um, in the welcome fields. Actually, my plan, our plan, was to have live streaming of the game, but it, it didn't work because I am dumb and I did something stupid with the um, um, with the um, audio recording. So that's um, that's hopefully go hopefully going to be fixed in uh, a later uh, in later installments of this series. All right. So see you on uh, on the forum until the next battle report. Bye guys, ciao.